Hello there you all, welcome to Real Turkey channel. This is your loving caring presenter Atilla Yeşilara introducing a new topic. Can Mehmet Şimşek rescue Turkish economy? To give some context, Mr. Erdogan unexpectedly won Turkey's dual elections held on 12th and 28th of May, after which he again unexpectedly signaled a course change in economic policy. Since 2018 or so, Turkey's economic model was called the new economy model. It is what we economists call a heterodox model in the sense that it doesn't deploy conventional or traditional economic means to achieve the results that you would want in any economy. Low inflation, high employment, high growth, and sustainable external deficits. The new economy model did exactly the opposite as well as really screwing up Turkey's commercial lenders, leading to very high inflation of uh, the currency being artificially suppressed at a level which is simply not concordant with sustainable external deficit target. During the election campaign, he had promised that he would stick the course on the new economy model, but hey, it is Mr. Erdogan. He's full of surprises. After he won the election, he brought back Mr. Mehmet Şimşek as the economy czar, which means he is in charge of both treasury and the finance ministry. Essentially, he is the person who runs economic policy on behalf of the president. Moreover, Mr. Erdogan appointed Cevdet Yilmaz, a very respected former development minister, as his only VP which is another signal to the markets that he intends business in terms of changing economic fortunes of Turkey. Finally, he brought Ms. Hafize Gaye Erkan, a renowned investment banker in the United States of Turkish origin, to lead the Turkish Central Bank. Um, I should probably do a video on Ms. Gaye Erkan, who is really a success story, a Cinderella story. I think uh, her job before the last one in the United States was co-CEO of the First Republic Bank, which went bankrupt. So obviously for those of us who expected the Erdogan economic model to run, to run Turkey to the ground and to cause a balance of payments, currency crises by the winter, we've been positively surprised. So the question is, can Mehmet Şimşek do the job? I'm going to give you two brief answers in case you don't have the time to watch the entire video. Technically, yes, he's capable, but these what we call austerity or stability programs take a long time and cause a lot of pain to the people at large. You will need two years to bring back Turkish economy to normalcy. Politically, probably not. The Turkish people, the business community, and most importantly, Mr. Erdogan doesn't have the kind of patience to wait for two years. Now, this video consists of several sections. A. What needs to be done. B. How Mehmet Şimşek and Gaye Erkan, to some extent, can achieve that. 3. Why do I think Mr. Erdogan doesn't have the patience to wait for the program to mature and yield results. Okay, what does Mehmet Şipşek need to do? Turkish economy is a mess. According to the latest Turkstat figures, headline inflation is running at 40%, which in the view of most economists is an underestimate. True inflation is probably 50%. Moreover, inflation is going to accelerate simply because both Erdogan and his main rival Kılıçdaroğlu made very extravagant promises to voters in terms of fiscal spending. He's probably amount to 4% of Turkish GDP or roughly $35 billion. Some of them have already been paid to the households. Others will be paid through the summer. Obviously, when you have such a massive boost in domestic demand at a time when the supply curve is inelastic, you get higher prices. Add on top of the fact that Turkey is expected to have another extraordinary tourism season to bring in roughly $50 billion of gross revenue, which is also domestic demand, you get a situation where too much money or too much income actually chases too few goods and services. So first thing that Mr. Mehmet Şimşek needs to do is to deal with rampant inflation. Two, current account deficits. Turkey will probably run a current deficit, current account deficit of 30-35 billion dollars this year. Precise estimates are hard to come by simply because there is great uncertainty about energy prices, which is Turkey's largest import item. For a 900 billion dollar economy, 35 billion dollar current account deficit is peanuts. But remember, Turkey's credit rating is junk. Our CDS premiums are about 500 
100 basis points, roughly twice the average of our emerging markets peers. And simply finally, there is no faith in Erdogan. Nobody wants to lend to Turkey or invest in the Turkish capital markets. So more than a current account problem, we have a current account financing problem. So the second thing Mr. Mehmet Şimşek needs to do is to narrow the current account deficit. And if that's not possible, then at least to increase Turkey's credit rating or Turkey's credibility at large to draw in more foreign capital to finance. Three, the budget. Our team estimates that at the end of this year, the budget deficit to GDP ratio could reach 10%, which is outrageous. One may argue that Turkey's debt to GDP ratio is much lower than the emerging markets average. So for a year or two, these high budget deficits are sustainable. I agree with that. In particular, when the world understands Turkey has just suffered a devastating earthquake, which would probably add at least 2% of GDP to expenditures to rehabilitate the area and to make good on the loss of the people who lived in that area. But for a variety of reasons, such as impossibility to find finance, the budget deficits are not sustainable in the long run. So Mr. Mehmet Şimşek must also impose fiscal austerity. That's to make cuts and raise revenue. Finally, there are the intangibles, which are to A, he needs to build a team. And so far, with the exception of Guy Erkan, he hasn't really been able to recruit kind of people he wants to either to his ministry or the central bank or other regulatory agencies. These programs are relatively complicated. They need interagency coordination, uh, sequ sequence, good timing putting things one after another and proper execution, which needs qualified teams. And most importantly, he needs to establish credibility, which is really largely out of his hands because he is not the boss. Mr. Erdogan is probably not going to let him take the kind of decisions that are absolutely necessary for the success of this program. At the end, we economists call such austerity or stability programs standby-like programs. They are not IMF standbys, but the government automatically imposed upon itself the kind of discipline that IMF would want if it were to loan to Turkey or stand by like as it is called in Turkish lingo. Now obviously this is a very difficult job but it's technically doable and it's actually formulaically speaking very simple. A. You immediately raise interest rates to the point where it suppresses demand for consumer durables and to some extent unfortunately private sector fixed investment and when demand decelerates prices start declining. Also higher interest rates bring in foreign capital because now holding Turkish lira vis-a-vis -vis the Brazilian real or South African rand becomes more profitable for carry traders. So the issue of current account financing solves itself. Three, of course, you need to cut budget spending. As I've said, immediate cuts are not feasible. Instead, probably new taxes will be levied on the people, one-time taxes, etc., etc. But these can raise at, at most 1-2% to 2 of GDP. Since Mr. Mehmet Şimşek is very limited in his fiscal maneuvering room, what he needs to do is to unveil what in Turkey we call a three-year economic program, where he explains how in the future he will constrain fiscal spending and find the cuts to reduce budget deficits. And finally, as I've said, communication strategy, which is also the bane of Fed and the European Central Bank, he needs to explain to the people that Turkey is determined to fight, fight inflation with conventional methods and to reduce its current account deficit or to increase the quality of its financing. For that, as I've said, he needs the help of Mr. Erdogan. Now, all of these things take time for two major reasons reasons. A. Turkish inflation is largely driven by expectations. In other words, it's not cost or demand driven. I would not deny that these factors do play a role in inflation, but inflation is largely inertial, meaning that people have given up hope on the central bank or the government at large fighting inflation. So when they make plans for the future, they automatically assume inflation is going to rise. This is in the West the called wage price spiral uh, or sticky expectations. It takes time to break down those negative expectations and to convince people, look, you got to constrain your wage demands. You got to limit your price increases simply because there will be not, not enough demand for your labor or for your goods and services. But unfortunately, the side effect of that is a relatively deep recession. And that's one of the main problems of Mr. Mehmet Şimşek. Mr. Erdogan doesn't have much tolerance for deep recessions. He's a pro-growth guy. Also, he's facing local elections in March 2024, 
which are as important as the national elections because as long as the opposition controls major cities like Istanbul, Ankara, Izmir, Adana, Antalya, they will always have a stake in the government. They will always have a hope of making a comeback and beating Erdogan in the next elections. And of course, fiscal cuts are painful simply because there is really not that much to cut. What Mehmet Şimşek ought to do is to stop government infrastructure spending and freeze all non-essential government tenders. But these are the spending items that feed Mr. Erdogan's crony regime, which means if these expenditures are cut, the business community which is beholden to Erdogan is going to be extremely angry and in return they may be be unable to finance his future election campaigns. Even under best case circumstances, we really don't expect these kind of programs to yield results in less than a year. And if we're talking about the end goal of say 10% inflation, 3% growth, a higher credit rating, and a stable currency, we're talking about two years. And during that time, Turkish economy will grow very slowly, unemployment will rise, and obviously there will be disgruntlement in the public. Nevertheless, it's doable. Now, why won't Mr. Erdogan have the patience to wait for that long? Well, first of all, he's not really committed to this program. It's not clear at all why he gave up on the new economy model and decided to embrace orthodoxy. Because throughout his election campaign, he complimented, he praised the new economy model and swore time after time that he's never going to change course. My theory is his foreign pals, which bankrolled his election campaign, Russia, Azerbaijan and the Gulf countries, told him that they are not going to lend to Turkey anymore and he needs to come up with a concrete and conventional economic program. So Mr. Mehmet Şimşek and Guy Erkan were brought to the job, but he is still not committed to the program, which is necessary for the credibility. His latest statements concerning Mehmet Şimşek is that he has not changed his views, that Turkey needs low interest rates for low inflation, but for the time being, he's just going to watch Mehmet Şimşek. This is not the kind of endorsement that instills confidence in the markets. Two, staffing. Even though the appointment of Cevdet Yilmaz, Mehmet Şimşek and Gaye Erkan are strong signals that he intends to change his ways, the architect of financial repression in Turkey, the poor economic financial policies that really undermine the commercial banking system and led to an overvalued currency. Former Central Bank Governor Mr. Şahap Kavcıoğlu is now heading the Banking Regulatory Authority, which is really a very dick move. <laughs> I mean, you know, if you want to tell people that you're going to change your ways, you want to get rid of the people who are responsible for the old ways, but the remnants of the old regime are there. The same is true for the central bank team. Ms. Gaya Erkan will work with two deputy governors who doesn't have a, who don't have a good reputation in the business community. And so far, she has not made any appointments to the Monetary Policy Council. So in a sense, she's in a minority. You can say Mehmet Şimşek and Gaya Erkan Erkan at this point are figureheads and they are not here for permanent jobs. Obviously this can change, but short of Mr. Erdogan coming out and saying, look, I have full faith and trust in these people. I am going to turn over the management of the economy to them and I will focus on other policy areas. Another thing is that there is deep resistance within his advisors and counselors and in fact the conservative Islamist community to this conventional economic program. Already managed Shimshek is having difficulty in staffing recruitment and there are unsubstantiated rumors of former but very influential advisors whispering into Mr. Erdogan's ear that it, it was a mistake. Turkey should go back to old ways, which is the old ways, which is probably just a command economy. Everything is controlled, like China. The interest rate on loans, the interest rate on deposits. Who gets how much credit? At what price? For what purpose? How to fight inflation? Well, just put everyone in prison who raises their prices. This is what they want. And there is going to be really a conflict and clash between this uh, adherence of the old regime and what Mr. Mehmet Şimşek needs to do. The problem is Mehmet Şimşek doesn't really have a constituency. I mean, he's well known. He's credible. People like him. But what I mean is in the AKP rank and file, he doesn't have the kind of support which would counteract the negative advice coming from the members of the old regime. And finally, Turkish people don't like recessions. They really hate unemployment. I had predicted in my previous videos 
that Mr. Erdogan would lose the elections. One reason I was wrong is because while inflation was high and hurting people, it seemed that as long as they had some kind of employment, people were willing, were willing to put up with Erdogan. But the problem with austerity programs is that, you know, they lead to unemployment. And that's very unpleasant for Turkey's business community and Turkey's impatient people. Finally, this is sort of like a vicious circle in the sense that as long as Mehmet Şimşek doesn't have full faith and trust of Erdogan, who supports him in his policy statements, a main ingredient to improve Turkish economy, which is foreign lending, foreign bond purchases, and foreign investment into Turkey is going to be very weak, which will simply delay the recovery, simply because if you have a huge flow of foreign capital, or if Turkish banks can borrow plenty of money, Turkish central bank will be able to increase its reserves, Turkish lira will appreciate or will depreciate slower than the inflation, which would reduce interest rates, uh, reduce inflation, and at the end, sort of mitigate the side effects of this very painful austerity program. So at the end, I really don't see enough signals from Mr. Erdogan that he has the patience to stay the course for the next two years for Mr. Mehmet Şimşek and Guy Erkan to be successful. The best I can say that I had predicted that under Mr. Erdogan's policies, Turkey would have suffered the currency or balance of payments crisis this winter, but this is now probably delayed. Things will not be wild for the Turkish economy, but some improvement will be felt. Current account would be comfortably, more or less comfortably financed in the winter, even if energy prices rise. And then after March 2024 local elections, we will see what happens. I want to thank you for watching this video. I know I've been remiss in placing new videos in my channel, but 15 days ago I was diagnosed with pneumonia and I've been laying low, you can tell from my voice, but I'm recovering uh, and hopefully uh, from now on I'll have more frequent regular videos. If you like it, subscribe or push the like button. Have a good day.